Greetings. Greetings in the name of the Most High. Um, forgive me, Lord, for it's hard for me to put up with the uh, the baby Christian spewing hatred of anyone and all people and all things that don't believe, think, walk, talk, just like them. I suppose I had some of that in me as well. And... Um, but part of that was, you know, I'd been hurt in the world. And um, I was looking for an excuse. This is going to be heavy, so strap yourselves in. God bless you, each one of you, and may you receive this. There's a lot of people that get into the Christ thing. Um for the wrong reasons. Um, who claim to be saved and all, but are going about it showing no evidence of the Holy Spirit, no evidence of any anointing, no um, unction to speak and slam everything and everyone and they're all over YouTube. I mean, I've had them, I've had to delete and ban them, you know, continuously. And some never grow out of it. I mean, I, there was a, a gal my own age who was just, you know, wanting me to call her, discuss it. I, I didn't really call. I, I don't really call people. I... I have a pretty busy day, a lot of a lot of things I do, and you know I I value those moments. Like I said, I haven't even been online much, except to check the news, um, a few articles I'm tracking, but I haven't been on social media, that is to say, much. And so I know some of you have written me emails about the the recent podcast. Thank you, and you've posted on my Google page, or wherever, however you've done it. I thank you. I'm. Um, Toying around with this Spreaker thing to get that as a, because that can um, load a podcast or a song or whatever on YouTube. Not that it's done me any good. I have like 15 plays or whatever on YouTube of music. But I was thinking about maybe I should just turn that channel into more of a speaking channel. But I'm not sure exactly. I, I was thinking the Spreaker thing might be an angle for that. And maybe we'll put this podcast on Spreaker just to see, and then and then publish it to YouTube just to see how that works. So Angie, heads up. Anyway, um, when I got into this thing, you know, I had an experience with God, and I've spoken my testimony here numerously. All oh, people always go, "I'd like to hear your testimony." I'm like, "You don't know the Zeph report? The whole thing is my testimony. Every single." Podcast is my ongoing testimony. And uh, if you're going to do that to me, where you know it just shows me there's a wall between us, you're playing a game with me, okay? So you're not going to get any testimony when it's all part of the uh, public record. And I do these pods to create a public record, you know, of you know my progress and things. And I, I know that. Um, You know, in the beginning, I, I would rail against things. I mean, I had some guy on once that talked about selling your soul for rock and roll. I forget who he was, but he had done a whole video series about showing all the demonic stuff with Marilyn Manson and, you know, whoever the, what was around in the 90s, really. And uh, I guess before that, and the Beatles and the whole thing. And I, you know, I, I've spent the last couple days sort of going back, and I've gone back in music, you know, like I've, you know, played uh, guitar, bass, and drums, you know, the, the, my basic band set up through amplifiers, and my, you know, old school through, you know, analog gear and preamps and analog recording, okay? And I've got, you know, and I've really enjoyed that. That's going to become more of a, you know, I'm going to keep on, you know, writing with guitar and things since I've kind of now I've been kind of rediscovering my youth and along with with that you know because I've 
I also will keep on with electronic music and uh, making my sarcastic statements to the world. But when I got into this thing, I was a hurt bird, you know? And uh, when God pulled me in, you know, I mean, and now let me make one thing very clear. I didn't become a Christian. I never have. God pulled me in and I became, you know, a son of the most high God, if you will, in Christ, which is God. All at kind of at once, without my going, you know, without my really doing anything on my own to go proclaim it or, or whatever, you know, and I, I managed to get myself baptized and, you know, the way I could, I, I felt uncomfortable with the church doing it because of the inherent um, uh, antichrist spirit that's there. Now, I don't hate them. I tried to get along with them, and I experienced a certain blowback because I wasn't, I guess, drinking the Kool-Aid or wasn't going with their hypnosis and mind control and, you know, wasn't going to be joining their idiotic culture because it's idiotic. Now, before... No, I, let, let me preface this by saying, before this experience with God, you know, I would eschew, I would, you know, like a lot of people, I would just dismiss the whole Christian thing as, you know, a kind of, you know, almost a, a psychotic point of view. I wouldn't take it seriously, and obviously I, the last place I wanted to go was any kind of church, and I was really into music and really into, you know, doing my own thing. But then this pushback came back, you know, on me, you know, through uh, persecution and things. And I, I later discovered that from my youth, I be I was traumatized about, you know, being, a, I guess, the the brunt of sexual abuse and 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 satanic ritual abuse, and that's pretty heavy, you know, pretty heavy stuff to find out your <laughs> the society is involved in that, you know. And, and then I, it was kind of brainwashed out of my mind because I wasn't really going to play. I just didn't fit into it, you know what I mean? And so this persecution started coming back, and I blotted it out because I, I thought, I must be mistaken. The world couldn't be like that, you know what I mean? Because I look at the television. I look at the World Book Encyclopedia when I was a kid. There's nothing about anything like that. I mean, no secret religion, no secret rituals. That's, that's got to be just like, you know, and I just dismissed it as perhaps I was, mis whatever, I, I was compartmentalized, you know, I, I, uh, I shut down in a sense. And then eventually it came back again in the form of, you know, uh, people taking their mask off and letting me know they're really in this thing and, you know, you either join us or we'll get you or something to the, you know, start putting the social pressure on me. And again, I didn't, couldn't acknowledge that that existed because of, of an earlier trauma so I thought, I'm nuts, I need help. You know, there, there couldn't be anything like that. Anyway, so that is where the, the whole gang stalking thing came in because of, that seems to be all tied, tied to it. You know, it's all part and parcel with it. And that can be very scary and very synchronous and very, uh, you know, very coincidental things that just can't be or are starting to happen in a coincidental way that cannot happen. Odds would be trillions to one against, you know, that sort of thing. But, oh, well, then I got put back together again. And, you know, then um, when, you know, I, you know, nothing like that, I was mistaken. Obviously, I had some problem. You know, then I went to discover that it was real again. You know, it kept coming back as being real, this satanic world, the system that people were all kind of nodding and winking, part of some secret thing that I had no idea about. Even though I had grown up in the midst of it, and even with these rituals going on, I just couldn't, you know, I shut down. I just couldn't acknowledge. It was just so far beyond my capability of, of, of reason and understanding that I, I couldn't accept reality, ladies and gentlemen. I mean, I do now, but I, I couldn't throughout my youth. And so I, I played a game, I suppose, of just compartmentalization game. I, I don't know that I was, you know, I was just trying to survive is all. And so there'd be 
one reality and one set of friends, and then I'd leave that and go to another set. As soon as it started getting heavier, getting onto this subject, I would leave and go somewhere else to keep proving to myself that nothing like that existed. Okay, so I would be in, you know what I mean? And then they go, well, where'd you go? And then you're back and then, you know, it all starts in again slowly. And so that's how I kind of kept going. You know, I, you know, not realizing that the world wants something from you and they want it bad. We want your soul. So I'm like, wow, this is a very serious situation because again, it's tied to the supernatural and there are a lot of supernatural things happening, you know, just really negative things. Which eventuated in, you know, I couldn't seem to get going in, in, in life. And, and uh, you know, I felt, you know, I, I was the brunt of unfairness a lot of the time. And, 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 you know, unfair firings from jobs. And, you know, kind of like you, I've had that kind of experience of persecution. But this is before I wouldn't even acknowledge Jesus. I wouldn't acknowledge the church or any of it because I already saw that it was, you know, a great source of corrupt. I mean, why would I trust them? You know, I mean, it's the... Same, same thing, you know, now they have a microscope on you. You know, that's not what I wanted. So, um, y y you know, so I'd been through that, all that. And, and uh, I uh, kept trying to carry on with music, both as a listener, as an audiophile, as a, which is a solo thing, you know, you sit there alone and you listen to audio, and I would do that quite a lot. And, uh, and you know, playing with people as I could, you know, adding my drums to any band or whatever as I could, and doing recordings and things. And um, also as a poet, I kept on, and I got published here and there, and, you know, I would then eventually became more of a, a writer, and then I got involved in screenwriting, and I just was kind of bouncing around, though, and nothing... Nothing really stuck. Nothing really became like a career path. There was really a desultory kind of meandering around, you know, just kind of bouncing off doorways and walls. And, you know, people would bring me in. The next thing you know, they'd be flushing me out the, down the toilet, you know. So it was like, wow. You know, this is, this, this is, I even went for counseling about betrayal. I said, you know, it seems I'm getting betrayed all the time. And well, what do I make of that? And then, you know, so then we played a charade. You know, not, not, I mean, I didn't know I was, but I, I was just, again, I realized that what I was thinking about, you know, the world being satanic and all that, that couldn't possibly be. So I would keep rejecting it, even though every group of people would do the same thing. They would all show that they're affiliated with Satan. And, um, you know, and that they were involved in recruiting uh, souls, and that, and that, and then, of course, there was the mean social pressure of, you know, join or die. You know, that that sort of thing. And um, and I just kept avoiding. You know, I kept rejecting that idea, thinking that it was some flaw within myself, some projection I was doing, some paranoia I must have had for some reason. And, you know, then eventually it just turned out all to be true. And then I had been, you know, kind of running and, you know, whatever. And then, and then you know, I felt I was all out of moves. I felt I couldn't really, you know, I mean, I can't fight the whole world. I, I don't want to fight, you know, I, I don't understand. I just really didn't get it. And nobody was really talking. And it seemed like. You know, if they were, it was cryptically or like I had a friend who would be like a spy, they would send him over and he would work on me, you know, and I, he wasn't really a friend, obviously. He was, you know, with them and they were, you know, trying to get us one way or the other into the, uh, you know, to the, you know, to the side of death, if you will, which I understood on some level. And then he was like, all smug and prideful and, you know, cocky and like, oh, we'll get you one way or the other, he said. Yeah, you know, when I pissed him off, that's what, that's what he would say, my friend. He was a movie producer that he and I had written screenplays together and developed stuff and worked on actual projects and on production. And, you know, we, we'd known each other for about 10 years before it got to that point. Anyway... <laughs> So that's the thing, you know, I mean, here's the lamb bouncing off the mirrors right and left and not knowing I'm a lamb and not knowing, you know, 
the wolf lamb thing and not really understanding any of it. Being told and warned by people, you know, like at the church, they said, you'll get picked off if you don't join the group. And I said, I don't know what you mean. I'm here worshiping with you guys. We're singing songs and we're reading scripture. What more do you really want me to do? I thought this was a church where I come to participate and worship with other people and have a good experience and share the love and fellowship of Christ. And then I go home. Isn't that it? And they said, no, 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 there's, there's, there's more to it than that. I said, well, that's not what Jesus says. That's not what Yahweh says. That's not what God's word says. Well, we just, you know what I mean? And I could have had them dead to right. Did we get to that point? You know what I mean? That's like the breaking point. And then there was no further discussion. And I had no idea what really they wanted of me. I had no idea, no, you know, I mean, the people would hint at different clues, you know, like, you know, if you jump into this, this or that. I, at one point I thought it was like becoming a swinger or some sex orgy thing. And then, and then it turns out people end up dead. And I'm like, and then there's guys over here taking credit for it. I'm like, what? I'm not, I don't want to be any part of any of that. And it's like you have the wrong attitude, you know. It's like you, 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 no one wants to be a part of it. It's just that you do that to survive. Otherwise, you're next. What? Wait a second. I see no evidence of this anywhere. So, you know, I'm caught in that kind of crossfire. You know, that's a horrible place to be, you know, and I, and a lot of you have had the same experience and you've never been able to bring it to words like I just did today. Have you? No, because you couldn't, because you're a rational human being. You cannot bring yourself to, to, to talk about this in a rational way because it's not supposed to exist in the first place. You cannot Explain to someone the trauma and fright and fright that you've had when you see people take their masks off. You know, <laughs> you know that sort of you know cackling demon thing. You can't believe it. And then they'll all say, in another time, they'll go, "Well, I'm secular. I'm I don't believe it in God or devils or any of that crap. You know, you're crazy." I'm saying I don't believe it in either. I saw it in you. So we got that, you know, and now at the same time throughout all this period, I'm not just an innocent lamb or anything, you know, I'm sinning away, taking drugs, having sex. Uh, see what else? Music, very materialistic, driving around nice cars and trying to, you know, chick magnets. Whatever, you know, I was doing all that and, and it, you know, but, but again, um, I don't really understand how I could, I guess I lived in sort of a fantasy world, you know, that, that um, you know, from childhood because it was there in childhood that I was, ran into this thing. And then, of course, throughout my life, um, and I said, is this true for all human beings? It's like it seems part and parcel of being on this earth, but no one's supposed to say anything because of the fact that you have to use your free will in a blind faith thing to 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 come over or to 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 you know to to either part you know to fish or cut bait or whatever you have to it has to be a blind use of free will it cannot be coerced in any way or see the reason for that is because if you're talking about the human soul, you can't really. Um, you can't overtly say anything or explain all this stuff because, you know, people would then all make the same decision. So there has to be this kind of, you know, it has to come from the individual, I suppose. You know, you have to signal in some way that you, you want in and you want out of this mess and you don't want to be picked on and lied to and shut out anymore and you know, can, can you know? It's just like in prison, you join a gang. You know, it's it's the same. You know, it's basic. 
you know, it's, see this whole conflict, this whole spiritual conflict, it's within us, but then it gets projected to the outside. And when you get enough people involved in it, it becomes a sort of consciousness. Now, I want to say this ahead of what I'm going to say, that all of this is a very low state of consciousness. You know, the satanic consciousness is very low, it's unintelligent, okay? Crafty, yes, wily, yes, but unintelligent in terms of, you know, it's all about short-sightedness and, you know, it's like people, you know, getting drunk and not wanting to have the hangover the next day. They enjoy getting drunk. They enjoy acting like fools. But then the next day they don't want to pay, right? It's like never again. And then, you know, it's that short-term happiness that drugs or drinking give you. And, and then there's, then you're paying for it, right? So it's, it's um, unintelligent in that, in that manner. But you know, people will participate as, you know, I have a young friend here in Santa Fe, 25. She says, yeah, it's, it's easier, she says. Now, this is a person that's not saved or anything, and it is, she's in the valley of decision. But she goes, yeah, it's easier. I just want to skirt by under the radar. I just don't want any trouble. And that's like, you know, I'm like, well, the, you're, but it. What you're talking about doesn't exist, right? Well, technically, no. <laughs> so it makes it very difficult for a rational, clear thinking, you know, just a normal human being to come into this world and just conduct themselves in a normal manner. You know, and the great word that I have for all this is unfairness. It's very unfair that the world would feed upon and kill the innocent and the lambs, you know, in order to let the dead keep on living, you know, the quote, the dead, quote, unquote. It just seems like a, 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 a complete travesty of justice. It seems like a, 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 a horror that should not be tolerated. And yet it's the very system with which we are, you know, that we are born into. And um, I had a notion earlier today, and this is, you know, what prompted the podcast in the middle of, gosh knows what wee hours this is, that about the, you know, the word in, in God's word where it says, you know, true religion is taking care of the widows and orphans and remaining unspotted from the world. You know, we went over this scripture. And I asked the Lord, well, what do you mean unspotted? Does that just mean a virgin to the world system? Like, you know, the Satanism, whatever, or, you know, how is that? And it's like, no, the world, you know, you can be spotted, you know, in the world if you love the world, if, you're, if, you, if you love the things in the world, if you love materialism, you know. I mean, all these things, you know, the way you react, just the way that the world works on you. I mean, we, we're continually spotted from the world. You know, it's, it doesn't have anything to do with whether you're in the Satan game or not, whether you're a lamb or a, a wolf, obviously. It's got nothing to do with that. We're all spotted by the world no matter who we are. And Christ washes that spot away with the blood of Christ. I mean, it's, so that's kind of good news in the sense, I mean, kind of. I mean, it's great news because the people, no matter whether they've, you know, who, whoever they are, if they're conscious enough to understand what I just said, they can be washed clean. I mean, you obviously have to, you know, remove yourself from these affiliations. But, I mean, that's, that's kind of, in a way, what, what I went through as well. At the same time, there's a tendency, you know. So I had suffered a lot, you know. I mean, you know, probably more than most people that, ended it for themselves, you know, I mean, I suffered more than them because I kept going. To, I wanted to find out why, you know, what was, I, I, I was afraid and not afraid at the same time. I was afraid to face my, my situation and I was afraid of what I might find. And indeed what I found was the very thing that I didn't want to find, that I had rejected when I was a child saying that could not be there. And then that's exactly what I found, unfortunately. 
And then, of course, when you find it, they, uh, you know, there are lots of people just waiting to jump on you. They're just drones. You know, they're, they're zombies. You know, they're, 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 they're so far gone that uh, they just react to things. They have no, no individuality anymore, you know. So they're, they're there, like, as a collective to jump on you and shame you and guilt you into submission to something that doesn't exist. Figuring that the more, you know, the more you're broken down, the more, obviously at some point you're going to ask for help. You know, and then you'll be told, well, what would you do for that help? You know, and then here comes the quid pro quo offer, which is basically, you know, turning you into a farm animal and turning you into something that's harvested at the end of your life. And, you know, and it's sort of like, the old Faustian tale turns out to be true, which was a piece of fiction, I thought. I thought. So now we got this world like it is, you know, in this way. And, you know, you've got the, you know, satanic jackals running things, you know, with their need for a totalitarian state and their need for... Um, Uh, with their need to kill those who don't see it the way they see it. This is the, the way I see the kind of the rulers of the earth. You know, they, they sort of wage war against God. They say there's no God. They're waging war against a God who doesn't exist and taking it out on the anointed of the Lord. Now, so when I started off down that path, you know, and God took me in after a couple of years, I was very adamant too, you know, I mean, I, but I, you know, it's kind of like I got sequestered into, you know, I had to, you know, I had some witches around and people that were throwing, you know, stuff at me and darts at me and things, but, and, and, you know, they certainly had their effect, but, you know, now sort of not. But, you know, all those forces come at you, you know, because you're now, now you can see and now you're awake and all that. At the same time, I'm very aware that we have a world here, a world gone mad because of the demonic. Everyone but a few people on a couple islands here and there, and here's where we're getting into today's topic. I, I suppose I should be grateful to this person for... So when I began, I, I'm sorry, it's stumbling a bit here. I, I went on the internet and I found that the Christians were just like the people I didn't want to be around. You know, I couldn't stand the Christians earlier on. I was selling something. I realized why they didn't have any spirit, no Holy Spirit. They were the most unspiritual of all the people I knew from Buddhists and, you know, New Agers and whatever. They, the Christians were the most unspiritual, unkind and unloving of all. And I wondered, how is that possible? And obviously it's because, the, you know, church is corrupted, you know, and, and that, you know, where you're closest to the truth, to God's word, you're going to have the most corruption. So you're going to have the most unspiritual and hateful people. I mean, after all, out of Christianity came the Inquisition. I don't separate the Protestant and Catholic churches. I don't really need to acknowledge the Reformation. I just know that, um, you know, it's a very violent thing, you know, and, and what we had raised up in the form of empire was not Christianity, but a Christian culture, if you will, which was really, again, the beginning of the Christian overlay over the pagan typical way the world works, brute force. 
And so the charade with the Muslims and the rest of it, I don't, I don't pay attention to. I understand there's a lot of history there, but I'm not really interested because it's a ruse. It doesn't matter. It's, it's irrelevant. What's relevant is this battle that goes on and this need for blood, one way or the other, by whipping up people against each other and, and causing persecutions of which the Christians are just as responsible for persecuting others as any other group. This was very troubling to me because I felt, ah, it was like, well, out of the frying pan and into the, into the grace and the beauty and the love of Christ. Nope, out of the frying pan and into the fire. Welcome to the NFL, Zeph. Oh, jeez. It's worse here. And, you know, as you recall, back, you know, in 2002, we had the Lamb Cafe, and we had, you know, all kinds of prophecy wars going on, and you had the whole, like, um, cabal of conformed Christians online, which were all breakaways from uh, terrestrial churches, you know what I mean, pretending to be like me, for example, pretending to be, but not really. You had all these different levels, all these different aspects to it, but basically just a reflection of humanity as well. Not, not much in the way of salvation was I seeing. And so I asked, Lord, are there, are there three people saved? Are none of us saved? Are none of, I know none of us are worthy, but are anyone, is anyone saved? Because it says the minute they start throwing a dart, say at me, let's say someone who says they're a devout Christian throws something at me that's obviously, then I've got some bait out right now. Let's see if that person takes it, you know, a little drama out there or somebody you know, attacked me for putting a, I put a documentary, I found this documentary, I was just fascinated with it, uh, about Ginger Baker, the uh, drummer. Um, you know, and very influential in my life, you know, Cream, these different bands, and you know, they're, you know, I understand it's all part of the British invasion, and it's all satanic and evil, and blah, 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 blah. But anyway, I just found him to be a fascinating fellow and very cantankerous and very, you know, like he would attack people. You know, if they didn't play what he wanted you to play, he, would, he, he, might, he might just jump you. You know, he was that kind of out-of-control madman, wild man, you know. And it's fascinating to see that most people didn't think he would live, but that he ended up living to a ripe old age, and he's still, as of a few years ago, he was playing, you know, concerts, but now he's old, you know, he's... And they did a documentary about him, and he's the, the, the interviewer that he was like at times wanting to throw the ashtray at him, to, to poke him with something, you know what I mean? And then other times he was like the loving father. But, you know, it, it's, 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 a, it's a rough bird, you know. But at the same time, he was a great influence on things. And, he, you know, yes, he, he credits being a heroin addict and nothing too great to boast about as helping to make him more fearless early in his, then he got off the heroin, you know. Anyway, he's, he's lived on beyond the rest of them, certainly. Um, and he had some all anecdotes and things, and I thought it was, you know, very nice. You know, it's this documentary just about, you know, someone that... And I finally, through this documentary, I learned something about drums, about what influenced him, about where, where, where this came from, this Ginger Baker guy. And I was very happy to hear that, and, you know, I got it, you know. Now, I know for a fact that, you know, and then, you know, they had bands with, I mean, he played in bands with uh, S Steve Winwood and, you know, the, the, it's a whole group of Englishmen, you know, and there's a certain amount that were the better musicians. And, you know, they all did satanic songs. I mean, Steve Winwood was Traffic, Low Spark, High Heel Boys, uh, Dear Mr. Fantasy, Freedom Rider, you know, some of these songs, they're, they're, they're very... You know, worldly, very, um, very much you know, like Low Spark was very much about being initiated into the world system, blah, 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 you know. And, and uh, I know quite a few people that would use that for satanic rituals to get like an orgy going at a house. You know, you'd put that on and have drugs and pretty soon it would slip into this thing and, you know, whatever. But the I the, doesn't take away from the fact that these are really, you know, the greatest musicians some of which have given their lives to Christ. And 
this is begging the question now, you know, are these people to be flushed down the toilet? Because I don't know any, quote, big time Christians that were as influential or as good as those people. But they say, well, those all, all that talent came from demons. And I realized, oh, no, no, that's not true. There was a struggle of a bunch of these musicians, and these are the cream that rose to the top. You cannot tell, you cannot say that because it's not true. And it's a cold world out there, yes, but uh, not everybody had it. Many, many tried and fell away. They just didn't have it. So, you know, so again, it, it gets confusing. Now, to paint it with a broad brush, so this uh, person comes along and says, you know, uh, you know, to, to you know, she tries to shame me on my page, which I'd, we'll see if she takes it. And so I got uh, obviously, you know, a little bit indignant, <laughs> to say the least, because she's you know using Christianity to trash people. Now, I've known a lot of women like this that do this a lot, a lot, and they're mainly women, not always. But but mainly, they're very much control freaks, Jezebels, whatever you want, and they're using this Christ thing to go shame everybody and putting all their legalese, legalistic reasons. Wherefore thou you you're you're you know you need help. In other words, they want to shame you and make you go get help. Like you're not with it anyone to 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 shame your walk in Christ, which you can't let anyone do because it's not dude. That would make her a complete liar, which she may be. We'll see. So I responded, you know, and I just said, uh, thanks for showing us all the love of Christ. And, you know, th thank, you know, don't worry. Ginger Baker will be dead soon so you can celebrate all you like. Awful, you know. said, all these people sell their souls, blah, blah, blah. Okay. So that, you know, so, okay, so let's burn all the records. And I've always been like, to me, that's horrifying. And then show your true allegiance. It's like, that's all bullshit. That's just bullshit. That's not right at all. You know, when it gets down to, I mean, and, and this person will be lucky if they find two other people that, can, that she could actually agree with. Probably none. You know, or people she could ride with for a while. But I mean, you know, obviously she's going to have a very rough time. But that's, the Lord may be breaking her because she's like a baby Christian and so... She's going to have this attitude. But I don't think I so much had that attitude because I still kept dealing with people. And I deal with people today. You know, I deal with, in, in the music world, I deal with people from all over the spectrum. And, you know, I did a Merry Christmas song, and I noticed a lot of friends that I have would, wouldn't chime in on that. But I did it to be politically incorrect. That's why I did it. Because I'm sick and tired of saying Happy Holidays. You know what I mean? And so, you know, I just, I do things, but I mean, I'm out there amongst them. And, you know, it's, it, and what I found is that most of these people are up for God. They don't know what to think. And um, they're, they're hoping for a solution. And if I show them this kind of, you know, mean-spirited, I disapprove. I mean, I, I, you know, I got in some scrapes in on one site that was mainly pagans, I mean, and they admit it, you know, and, and then eventually we get into conflict. But now I understand that I'm to be in that conflict and we're going to go back and forth and it's going to be, you know, not, not a, you know, ribbons and, 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 and champagne, you know, it's going to be uh, conflict from time to time, you know. It's just because, you know, when you're in Christ, truly, and I, I'm not saying that, you know, as far as this, this documentary thing I posted, it was just symbolic of like a million other incidents like that. And it's just brought it back to mind. And I, I just want you to, leading up into all this, I wouldn't go to a Christian thing. I mean, I wouldn't deal with it. I was mainly involved with, you know, Eastern philosophy and, you know, Buddhism and, and Hinduism and things like that. Like that, I wasn't. I did not like Western mysticism. I did not like Madame Blavatsky. I did not like, um, you know, Manly P. Hall, and the Philosophical Research Society in Los Angeles. I went there. I didn't like it. It got creeped me out. I don't like the pyramids. I never did. That's all part of the West, as far as I'm concerned. So I went east. I went east, looking for peace.
you know, when I realized it was all satanic, I thought, well, they may, maybe the devil isn't over there in the east. But, oh, he's there, all right. And a lot of these religions and temples and things <clears throat> celebrate uh, the, 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 the idea that the devil and God are all part of just one bit of life. And they have no problem getting along in their lives. I see them in their rituals and their dinners and their celebrations and their weddings and their, their feasts. And, and I see people here doing the same thing. And yet I'm unable to really, uh, y you know, with, with some sort of abandon, you know, just kind of be a person in that milieu because uh, I'm a conscious being. I was awakened. And not to put them down and say they're all asleep, but I mean, people that are really true believers in the world that it's really going to be okay and all that, those kind of things. You know, they believe in the world and they believe in uh, existence as some sort of thing in and of itself and don't question us, don't inquire whether there's a God or whether what the point is. Many of these people are just angry, you know, as they get older. But whatever it is, uh, when I posted that, I get jumped on and, you know, and I'm thinking to myself, you know, if I saw this as an example of a Christian or Christianity back years ago, uh, this person would have turned me off totally. I would have just gone the other way. I'd just say this is a person so filled with hatred and, and so filled with anger that obviously there's nothing going on there with the Holy Spirit, nothing, you know. I mean, I don't see any reason to become, you know, something like this, just sitting there on my high horse disapproving everything in the world because it's all satanic, it's all lousy, it all sucks. And I'm glad the incident came up because it's, it's, it's led me to a talk I was going to do anyway. But I never wanted to be like that. I may, you know, even though I admit to, 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 to having to draw a line at times, you know what I mean, and having to say, well, this is satanic, you know. I saw this film where they were making fun, fun of uh, biblical archaeology, you know, finding the Ark of the Co finding Noah's Ark, finding, you know, um, the skull of, of, of uh, Goliath they had, in, and they're making fun of that. And um, <clears throat> they're making fun of the whole, of the, all of Christianity and how hypocritical Christians are. And, you know, I have to say um, the humor was well-placed, well-deserved. And they're putting down, you know, Jesus, and they're putting down the whole biblical archaeology, and obviously putting down Judaism at the same time, and putting down the, all, all religions, really, in a way. As Hollywood would do, because their, their religion is the totalitarian left. You know, that's, that's what they've... Basically, they, they were all wanting to kill this Ammon Bundy guy, wanting to kill these people up who are, you know, organizing to help the Hammond family or whatever. They, you know, Montel Williams, the uber leftist, calling for the execution of Ammon Bundy, though he didn't do anything to anyone. You know, he, he wanted him executed. I mean, <laughs> that's the real civil war, but it's not against, it's not against Ammon Bundy. It's the idea that these are... You know, this is the war against God, that Montel Williams hates God, obviously hates himself. You know, I, I would hate to be him. He's so myopic and stupid. But, you know, but people like that are very dangerous, you know, calling for murder. So he's a murderer. But that's a side issue. My thing is, you know, the hatred of Christ, the hatred of those, just going back, to they sold their souls for rock and roll. And we're going on and on with analysis about Marilyn Manson and this and that. And it's missing the whole point, by the way. You know, it's not being accurate in the reporting about these people, for one thing. And I run into the same thing, and I, I have to confess, I've, you know, I fell into it myself a bit, you know, but not like this where every single thing is evil, that everyone does. And so we have this little cult here, led by Jezebels, handlers, controllers, you name it, to keep us in this little cult where everybody outside is evil pagans doing awful things, but we in here were saved. <laughs> Until we start tearing at each other or lusting after each other or doing something to break the rules. And then we realize nobody is safe. 
no one has the upper hand. No human being has the right to stand there on it and, you know, just simply condemn every, everyone and everything in the world because God made the world and everything in it. It's just, it's the dangest walk. It's not an easy walk. But, like I told this person, thank God, God drew me in and he chose me. And of course, I left the bait there. Are you going to excoriate me as not being a son of God? That's what I'm waiting for. And that would then show me that she has no discernment, no Holy Spirit, nothing. She's got nothing. Or you've lost your ways of. Like, had I ever really found my way? Everyone accused me of all this crap way back when they were accusing me and accusing me. And just like she's accusing me, you know. If she was the Inquisition, she would have burnt me at the stake already. She's an example of, of millions and millions of people that are just, I, I don't know, I don't understand. It's embarrassing because it does not reflect the love of Christ. I mean, obviously, I just felt like saying, hey, don't worry, he'll be dead now. You know, I mean, Ginger Baker's an old man, he'll be dead. So you can all celebrate. Another asshole goes to hell, yeah. And I just can't do that, friends. And um, my, my friends who love the Lord, they're not doing that. We're not doing that. And we're going to take those slings and arrows. You know, and my message to this idiot is back when I was, you know, or I'll just say this ignorant one rather than idiot because... I'm not supposed to call people Raka, so ignorant, but ignorance is a good call. I was right there with them. I wanted nothing more than to be accepted by them and to be in the path of, you know, I mean, everybody was grooming me to be this uh, drummer, you know, they, that I was, you know, really, I mean, I hate to say it, but I could do everything that Baker could do. I mean, he was the first to do it, but I could do all that stuff. Yeah, I could... I just had a knack for it, you know. It's, I never really promote it too much. I never let you know about it. So people know, hear my tracks, and they hear my drum design work and my drum. They, they understand I got it. You know, I got it. You're born with it. It's, something, it's a God-given gift, the drumming. Most people don't have it. <laughs> I hear their tracks. I know they don't have it. I do have it. And um, so I feel, a, you know, a certain affinity with drummers. But, I mean... So I was, you know, in every audition that I would be in, I obviously crushed the competition. I would always win every time. It wasn't even close. I blew away everyone every time. But then we got into this problem of not being equally, in other words, this, this problem. Now, if it was all so powerful, shouldn't I have been inducted into the satanic by winning one of the auditions and then being inducted into the... The whole thing. Shouldn't I have sold my soul to the devil to be a, a better player? I didn't need to be a better player. That's the thing. I didn't need more talent. I had it. And I could go on for hours doing a solo for, for two hours. I could go on for four hours. I could go on indefinitely. So should I have been... Uh, Shouldn't that have worked since I was in Hollywood and, and, and you know, I was, uh, had kind of, you know, I, I was kind of boy interrupted and I had to sort of be taken away. I came back. But anyway, I was there and I would win these auditions and, you know, um, shouldn't I have... We had, the funniest one was the Christian audition. They wanted to do the Book of Revelation and I, I kind of won that and they... They got on the phone to, to the, the Calvary Chapel where I was at and talked to the music leader about me. And then so when I went to the audition, they locked the door so I couldn't get in. Um, they were actually worse than Hollywood. The Calvary Chapel musicians are actually worse, if you want to put it on that scale, than Hollywood. The worship team at the Calvary Chapel is actually more hateful 
than the worst Satanist you ever met. <laughs> if you want to go on that scale, if you want to start breaking it down like that, that never happened. But that's the first time that ever happened when I was locked out of an audition because of, of not being a Satanist. I mean, that's the worst persecution I've had for not being a Satanist was from the Christian church, the evangelical church. So now we know how fucked up the world is, right? We, we seriously, now it's, you know, I have a witness, I have witnesses, you know, it's not like, like I've done all this on my own, I'm making it up, I have witnesses to everything. I wouldn't, I wouldn't put the word here if it were not established already via witnesses. Uh, if it's subject to imagination, I wouldn't put it here. But I admit, I would love it to be imagination. Oh, my God. What a gift from, that would be from you, Lord. And I, but I know you're not going to give us that gift. I know it is what it, I, it is. What it is. Jeez, you know. But my God. So, okay, so in Christ, though, you know, why it didn't bother me that much is because I obviously knew there was something wrong with the Calvary Chapel, you know, with, with all of them, the Rocky Peak, the Calvary Chapel, the, all these so-called churches, I realized, were all fake now. And I realized they weren't serious about, you know, and, and, the, and, and in Hollywood, the same things. So don't you think with the church, I'm surrounded with people who can do nothing but pressure me. Don't you think that that should have happened then? In other words, did it hurt me at all to listen to Jimi Hendrix or, you know, when I was um, saved, I thought, oh, I'll go buy these Christian records and stop listening to these Alice in Chains and whatnot, you know, or whatever I was listening to. Metallica, Soundgarden, whatever. I'll go get these uh, Christian records, I said. And I was playing them and I was pissing people off, so I thought, oh, now I'm on to something. But then eventually I realized my own hypocrisy. And I interviewed a guy, a very successful producer, a Christian man who eventually, you know, and we were not, we, you know, and I, it's just that same wall. The wall in Christianity was much more severe than the wall in secular Hollywood. The hatred was much more profound and murderous than it was in secular Hollywood, where the real bad Satanists are supposed to be. So this producer, his name is Brian, and, uh, I won't give the details of his last name. It's, it's in back interviews years and years ago. If you want to dig it out, you can find him. He said this. I believe he even said it on my show. He said, yeah, I th well, no, he said to me privately, but, you know, but I'll just say it. Uh, it's the same producers and the same requirement of selling one's soul to, to be a Christian artist. That's what he told me. So that put a whole new spin on Amazing Grace. I had copies of Amazing Grace. We would, we would play these records over and over. We had a whole bunch of them, you know, the, the rock, Christian rock alternative. We thought, oh boy, we've struck pay dirt now. We're in this whole other world. Then slowly, bit by bit, it all got blasted away from us when, when we kept finding out a little more and a little more and a little more. And then finally, a record producer, you know, talks to me and says, hey, Zaf, this is what's going on. It's like, oh, I see. Wow. So there is no sanctuary I could go to in music. I mean, how stupid I was to think that I could play with. I thought, now finally I can play drums with. No, you can't. Wow. That's wild. So what does one do? 
Now, usually someone would come along and say, well, if you can't beat them, join them. And I'm saying, beat who? What you're talking about doesn't exist. Beat, what beat, who are you going to beat? I can't beat anyone. Well, then join them. Join who? They don't exist. You got to make everything so difficult. No, it's not up to you, is this you human. You human talking to me. It's not up to you. It's up to him who made us, isn't it? He's the one that divides the. Have you ever wondered, Mr. Satanist? I know, worlder. Have you ever wondered, Mr. Materialism, Mr. Non Fantasy World? Have you ever wondered why there is a distribution? of wolves to lambs, and why there's lambs at all, why they're not all eaten up? Have you ever wondered why in the wilderness there's bunny rabbits like around here all over the place? We have rabbits, lots of rabbits, even jackrabbits with big giant ears that look like they're, they're like small deer, you know? They look almost like kangaroos. And we've got them here, and we also have coyotes, fierce coyotes. You ever wonder why there's always rabbits every day feeding, you know, hopping around? Why the coyotes haven't eaten them all up? Have you ever wondered why God keeps rabbits out of the mouths of coyotes? Have you ever wondered why lambs stay lambs with all the pressure and all the meanness and all the hostility and all the setups and all the games and all the unfair crap that gets done to these people. Have you ever wondered why they're still there haunting you, haunting you, haunting you? Ah. Now we understand Herman Melville's Bartleby the Scrivener. Ah, humanity is why. It's human. It's what God made is why. That's the eternal struggle here on earth. And you know what? It's never going to change it's, unless God changes it. But right now, this is the way it is. You ever wonder why everyone's not swept up in it? And when everyone does get swept up in it, you know what happens? That civilization ceases to exist. That's right. It's the same pattern every single time which is why I'm not interested in history, uh, because history is all lies anyway. You know, it's whoever wins the war gets to do the history, so it's all bullshit. Here's what I look at. Oh, well, when that fell, obviously everyone joined up with the corrupt ruler, and therefore it fell. Joined up meaning, you know, went through. Everyone got on board with Montel Williams, therefore it fell in calling for the deaths of, or the, the sodomizing, of, uh, sodomizing of angels, or whatever he's calling for. Well, I don't want to single him out too much, because he's such an ignorant dumbass, but, you know, just calling for someone's death because they're questioning the government or standing up for, for a, a human right, they're not violent. They're not, they're not, they're, you know, they're, 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 it's not like, uh, you know, but, but this idea of this blood lust for another Waco, another Ruby Ridge and Montel Williams cheering the charge for blood. You know, if you ever have a civil war, you understand the two sides, right? <laughs> Good. There's one side that will hide behind the government, but the problem in the government is a lot of people in this country, for example, in the government are awake and are disapproving of this uh, takeover. But not Montel, he feels he's gonna cut a good deal. But he's so ignorant, that, and he's so unconscious, you know, a literally an unconscious soul, so, someone that is so far asleep that, um, that there just is no reaching him, you know what I mean? There's just no there there. You can try to shame him all you like, you know. He, he writes every, he's got a thing against Alex Jones. He's always writing it. I've never been called nigger so many times in 48 hours. That's all bullshit too. He's, you know, not, if anyone called him that, it's agent, it's provocateurs who are, 
You know, that's, that's, he, so he lies. So that's all he lies. He wants blood and he lies. Meanwhile, Alice Jones is meeting with Louis Farrakhan, <laughs> which is kind of, uh, gosh, I don't know what that's all about. But I, they've jumped on me for, you know, hey, the same person that was trying to shame me on my Google page, you know, I've been putting up with it, you know, with it. But, you know, she hates the Jews and has this Jew thing going on, which we've talked about. And then the whole, she's bought the whole hook, line, and sinker, all, the whole program. She's completely under their control and thinks she's a free person, but she's just a, a uh, she's batting for the wrong side. You see, when you have so much hatred and it gets vectored through Christ and through this sort of lens of Jesus Christ and all that, you become actually worse in the hatred, in the, in the judgmentalness and all the legalism than any Pharisee ever. It's just because you get closer to Christ, it goes one way or the other. You either become love, the love doctor, or you become hate. You know, when you get close to the light, it breaks down one way or the other. Anyway, in looking back through my past, I realized, you know, if I was there in England along with these musicians, there would have been the same problem not that I was causing, but there wouldn't be, you know, there wouldn't be this connection. Now, oddly enough, I was also researching some other musicians. I was researching Steve Marriott and the, the death at the hands of the mob. All these musicians, you know, they are the cream of the crop, absolutely. And they got there through hard work, absolutely. But all these musicians, you know, they, they earned it. You know, I, I know that sometimes I've said that they get extra special, you know, oomph from, you know, the, the God of forces. And, you know, it's true, but I get oomph too from the Lord. So, you know, kind of cancels out. So I was looking at Steve Marriott and how he died in 1991. He, he was um, around a long time. He, he was the guy that wrote the song and performed Ichiku Park, which was, again, another, you know, satanic ritual song. But... He had this great voice and he had this great guitar playing ability and, and um, you know, it's a very, he ended up being in a concert band called Humble Pie that was his band with Peter Frampton and they, they went around, you know, being more of a, managed by a, a big time guy who was under control of the mafia. And the, the thing that was so interesting to me, if he's such a Satanist, you know, which, which I doubt, <laughs> at this point looking deeply into it because he got no money. He got no royalties. At one point he was begging for food. He had to steal food to eat. And this is after Humble Pie. This is after being a big time having, you know, billboard hits and whatnot. It, you know, he's, he's playing for peanuts. So finally he disappeared from the limelight and did little tiny gigs just to pay the rent and to have food around England. And then a, a mysterious fire, you know, and he had an addiction to cocaine and whatnot. And a lot of people think he was into the mob for money, you know what I mean? So he went home and he was drunk and whatnot. And, and they say that a lit cigarette started fire on the floor and that took him out. And it very well may could have, but at the same time, all the music business, all the concert promotion is mob. The mob. I remember there was a death of this guy, Wolf. There was Wolf and Riss Miller concerts out in L.A. And then Wolf lived up on uh, Mulholland. And I don't know why I can remember this, but I remember, you know, Wolf got gunned down in his house. And, and since the concert, they were concert promoters, Wolf and Riss Miller. And um, so Wolf was gunned down on Mulholland Drive in his house with all the security he had, you know, being a millionaire and, you know, being a, he'd, you know, they'd have like Led Zeppelin and, you know what I mean, the LA Forum, you know, the big concerts. So, you know, again, showing me that the mob, you know, that was a, obviously a mob hit. And I think most people believe that because it was a guy that was just a break in, you know, shoot him, leave, right, hit. So it's all the mob, you know, <laughs> there's those kind of deaths all the time. 
And they run the movies. They run, they run all. They got their hands in everything, you know. And then people say, well, it's the Illuminati. It's the mob, man. It's the mob. And, um, you know, in, in mainly in sports, entertainment, you know, you say, well, it's the Jews. It's the mob. You know, well, it's the, the Jew mob. No, it's not the Jew mob. It's the mob, and it goes back a long ways, and it's, uh, it does go back to Sicily. It goes back to the coast of Nostra. It goes back, you know, in, in, in to old Europe. It goes back to a lot of things, but it's not a Jew thing. If you say it's a Lucifer thing, you know, blood oath to the devil, all that, sure, you know, fine. But it's the mob. And, you know, the Gambino crime family is who uh, Steve Marriott met with before you know, and, and they were trying to promote, what happened is they were promoting Humble Pie, and then they tried with Marriott Solo, and it didn't really work out, but Peter Frampton was breaking out, so they wanted to, after Humble Pie kind of peaked at 1972, or one, or whenever it was, then you had Frampton coming on in 1974, so he got the push from the mob, you know what I mean? And... Uh, Marriott got left behind, and Frampton rose, and that was like all part of this whole mob sort of concert promotion management. And then eventually, Frampton tried to get back together with uh, Marriott, who's an extraordinary talent. I mean, this is this is people just don't understand. I mean, extraordinary singer, beyond belief singer. You know, uh, a little guy, maybe five feet tall. You know, I mean, we could belt out. So they were going to try something together around 1990 or so, and uh, it didn't really work out between the two of them, and they were kind of shopping around a couple of demos to record companies trying to revive their careers, see if they could do it again. And uh, so Marriott went back to England, and then shortly thereafter he, he died in that fire, which people thought could have been foul play. I mean, there was, there was, a, there was a, the, a cloud of the mob around it, because because he was he died penniless is my point, and he was penniless for a lot of his life. What happened to the royalties from the records and all the success that he had from being the leader of the Small Faces and then Humble Pie and then other other projects he dug? There's nothing to show for it. He was he didn't have food to eat. To me, I think it all went up with whatever money he had went to drugs, and I think he got into debt with the mob for his coke habit and whatever else. And I think that's, if you want to look at some, some of the deaths of other rock stars, um, you know, I think the drug habit is a good place to look. And so the, the irony is that it's the mob that gets you addicted to the drugs, right? Who bring it around, and then it's the mob you're indebted to, and then they want a piece of your action. Before you know it, they've got everything. And, and you know, and if, then if you can't pay on top of it, they'll just whack you, figuring, well, these records will be more valuable now. So, yeah, there's a star whacker thing, but again, I think it's all related to money. I don't think people get whacked unless there is a money motive. That's what I think. I've been around, you know, way before all this kind of like sort of pop culture, you know, Illuminati hit thing, you know, blood sacrifice. I mean, that's one way of looking at it. We talked about that about three weeks ago, two weeks ago. And, but something just didn't feel right about that. You know, that talk I did, it just felt incomplete. And now adding the money, the mob, people being, you know, you can get up to hundreds of thousands of dollars in debt and even millions with drugs. And then you owe to the mafia, you know? And then it's like, if you don't, right? You get the rock star, they're making money. They, it's easy to get, you know, get drugs. You start putting it on credit. Before you know it, the royalties are coming in, but you have this huge debt. You wind up dead. You know, it's, it's just a sad, horrible reality. But again, what did Satan do for these people? And if this idiot that commented on my page has any sense at all, you know, the same thing happened to Ginger Baker, who I, I'm glad that this has become a, you know, an issue. I, just, I, can't, I actually can't believe what that woman wrote. I can't believe that someone would be that mean. Here's a guy who, you know, the band Cream was a big, big hit, you know. I mean, he had some money and wound up being in South Africa on a farm. 
But the point of it is, is he got no royalties from Cream, none, because it all went to whoever did the lyrics. Lyrics get half, melody gets half. What's the drummer get? Nothing. He got nothing. And he was the one that formed the band. He was the one that was the leader. He was the one that organized it. He was always the leader of the band. So uh, he got nothing. St checks still roll in for Clapton and, and, and the, the deceased Jack Bruce, uh, the great bass player and singer Jack Bruce. But uh, they're, they're flowing into their estates, but not into... So it was interesting seeing the documentary and seeing that end of things. I mean, just how people get screwed. I mean, again, like this, this, these rock stars, you know, many of them, you know, penniless. So um, it is fascinating to me because when people influence an industry, when people influence the art of an industry, or, or when people influence in their way, I've never, I don't see Christian drummers influencing me, but I did see Ginger Baker being an early influence. And, um, you know, he did a lot to influence the entire, one could almost argue that he was the beginning of what ended up being heavy metal drumming, you know what I mean? And so, you know, he was very influenced by African, natural African drumming, which I found fascinating. I went back to my own library of samples and I have some African drumming, you know, and I started listening. I'm like, dang, that's it. That's where his sound came from, from Africa. Maybe that's why he wanted to go to Africa. I don't know. But all that is fascinating to me. So to him, I guess, God would have been, or the spirit. And yes, he would justify his use of heroin because he said it made him fearless. And he can say any kind of thing he wants. I don't believe anything he says, you know. I'm not looking at him as a role model to be like him as a man or to put him up as a great example of a great compassionate hum human, I am simply noting the contribution and uh, apparently, well, it's just, it's, it's, it's you know, I, I just won't allow it. I mean, I'm, I'm going to, you know, probably just block this person after they make their, they're going to take the bait and make a stupid response. And hopefully this this will be up so you can see it. Then if you want to go watch her stupid, you can maybe watch it in real time. <laughs> but she, she'll take the bait and make a stupid response, and then uh, that'll be the end of it. Just like I can't even tell you how many other people. I mean, the, it, it, I don't know why these women, they get into Jesus for a year or two, and they think they can now start browbeating everybody around them like like... You know, we've all been on this path a lot longer. We've taken a lot of hits. There's been a lot of persecution and, and just lost opportunities and tragedies and, you know, near-death experiences, all kinds of things because of it. And then they come along thinking they can just, uh, you know, uh, just have diarrhea of the mouth and say anything they like. And, um, you know, that there's no... I mean, I, I, I'm, I'm horrified. But it was a... a flag of caution because I felt that, you know, it was like a reminder to me. It was like a little reminder, hey, this is what's going on out there. And so I can't tell you how many sites I go to where they're screaming about the Jews, they're screaming about uh, if, you, if, you, if, you, if you even put a documentary of, uh, it was a great documentary, by the way, and it was published by Rolling Stone magazine, you know, a, 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 you know, a, a, um, a leftist rag, you know, a godless leftist, we all know this. But they did a fantastic job on the documentary. The guy, Jay Bulger is his name. He did a, he did a marvelous job. It really helped me because I really wanted, you know, I mean, I'm curious about those times and my time in it. And, you know, like I said, I had, you know, quested along that path and I played in bands here and there. And, you know, but it kind of, you know, there was always this, tension about this satanic thing going on. You know, everyone's got to be on the same page. Or, so, but, but that was going on in, um, you know, uh, college. That was going on at, at the, uh, the, the beach. That was going on among surfers. That was going on among... I don't know where it wasn't going on. So you'd have to, like, if, to take that logic of condemning the pagans, you'd have to condemn the whole world then. 
or condemning anyone that promotes. I mean, I, I, I'm like, you know, all right, well, live in a little box. I don't care. But I'm, you know, I'm, I'm here as a musician. And I, I'm not here to have, I'm working with people that are phenomenal. I don't know where they're at, you know, uh, spiritually. I, they're probably not where I'm at, you know. I mean, where I'm at is kind of a dangerous place to be. But it's not like I willed it. I, it was, I wound up here. It's not like I'm hating anybody. I'm trying not to hate people. When things happen, like rejection, I don't, you know, I heard about it, you know, and I mentioned it. I mentioned the person that did it. But I'm not ultimately going to hate them, you know what I mean? I can't, see, once I start canceling out everything, well, the television, have you ever looked at television? It's there to program you. It's satanic. It's demonic. Well, you better not look at it. If you promote any television show or a music video, or if you promote YouTubes, you are promoting Satan. If you put a YouTube up, you're promoting Satan. If, if you wear um, clothing that you bought uh, on Amazon, you're promoting Satan. If, if you... Um, Listen to rock and roll. I mean, Brother Thomas was on my show. He said he bought the iconic record from Aerosmith, Toys in the Attic, you know, Sweet Emotion and all those songs. And the mid-70s, right? You know, it's, it's not, not my favorite, but it's, that's what he likes. He likes rock and roll. Okay. Then he's obviously, you know, a horrible person because he's obviously still a pagan and he's satanic and he's awful. If you, um, you know, I could even say if you ingest food that's packaged from, you know, satanic people, you're, you're a Satanist. If you breathe the same air, you're a Satanist. Uh, if you shop at Whole Foods, you're a Satanist. If you um, Obviously, I mean, if you listen to any music or see a movie, oh yeah, how is a movie any different from uh, the, the rock bands? How about any pop music? How about Taylor Swift, you're a Satanist? How about, uh, you know, um, uh, seeing, um, I don't know, what did I see? I saw a movie recently. How about that? I, you know, I watched one last night called a Most Wanted Man, Philip Seymour Hoffman's last effort, and he was magnificent in it, and, and but by my saying that, I'm endorsing a heroin addict who obviously was a Satanist. So I ask you, where is it that there are not Satanists? And the answer is, most people don't even know if, I know a lot of people on the satanic side, they don't even know what it is. Just like when I was in the world bumping off things, I was just kind of like drifting around through the world and I, you know, I, I didn't want anything to do with Christianity because it was like, because it is what it is. It appears the way it appears, but it's a mystery too, you know, it's what's interesting about it. It's, it's like, yes, but there's really a there there. But then again, it has the most hate of anything. But of course, because it's, it's the light is in there. You know, it's, it's, it's a weird, we'll get into that on another podcast. But in other words, you cannot, there's, you, you know, you're here on this earth. Now, in my entire life, why am I not a Satanist? Through no effort of my own, but through supernatural means, I suppose, because I want to be a Satanist. I want to be loved, and I want, I want to just not only win the audition, but then win the awards and have the plaques on the wall. I want all that, or I wanted it, you know. I think it's been beaten out of me by now. But, but yeah, you know, but I was in a different battle. I was a spiritual warrior, and I didn't really even know it. I was a reluctant warrior, okay, a reluctant, a reluctant person. And they kept telling me there's only one alternative, only one alternative, only one alternative over and over. And that, you know, if you want to be somebody, if you want to be a, a, you know, an adult, if you want to be reasonable, if you want to be, you know, a man, if you want to be this, if you want to be that, you've got to be in this, you've got to, you know, prove yourself in this milieu. And I'm like, 
or what? Well, then we're going to have a problem. Okay, well, then let's have the problem. So that's a warrior. That's a, that's a spiritual warrior. And that's, um, again, reluctant warrior on my part. I don't, want, I don't want to be at war with anybody. You know, I, I just want to be, you know, lovey-dovey. I, I really don't want to be at war with people. But this is the situation I find myself. The other thing is, Jesus reminds me to be loving, compassionate, turn the other cheek and all that stuff because it's really about the, the greater issue of souls because Satan's trying to win them and God wants to win them. And the, how do we, does God win souls? Through us. And how do we win souls? By barking everyone and hating everyone? No. When they see something of Christ in you, you know, it, it could be something you're not even aware of that inspires them in some way. It's easier with honey than vinegar, you know, when they're shamed, like this person was trying to shame me for posting a video. I mean, can you imagine you post a video and they want to shame you? Like if I posted uh, Julia Child's cooking how to cook a, you know, a raspberry tart, I suppose I'd be shamed because she's a Satanist. You know what I'm saying? It's, it, you don't know, you, you don't want to give up ground to these people doing the shaming. You gotta, you know, stick it back to them where it belongs. It's their problem, not mine. But anyway, um, yeah. Not my first rodeo. So was there any danger of becoming Ginger Baker or, you know, um, uh, Eric Clapton or becoming, um, you know, any of these people for me? The answer is no, there is no danger of that. So that you would say that the music had no undue influence on me. The music had no influence on you whatsoever in terms of your direction in life. So should I condemn them? No, you should not condemn them. You should, you know, forgive them for they know not what they do. They obviously don't realize, you know, now their lives are over and many of them dead. They don't realize what's at stake here. We only have a short period of time to get, you know, to understand all this. We can't sit here playing music forever, though God likes us to play music. I'll tell you something. I was very inspired by the music of those days, and, and um, a lot of it was genius. And uh, I'm just so sorry it had to wind up being Christ. Such a bad reputation. So many hateful people. So much blood throughout the ages. Shame, a shame. I'm just sorry there's not some cool way of saying, hey, look, here's a door to this beautiful thing. People would like it, you know, an escape. But alas, it's not to be. So you get rocks thrown at you from Christians who are all arguing that it's the Jews or whatever. You don't say that. You're a Zionist and a traitor. Yeah. No, I'm not a hateful person. And I'm not going to let them poison me. I mean, ang I can get angry for a moment, yes, when someone, you know, tries to shame me, chooses me off, says the wrong thing, does the wrong thing. But then it dissipates, you know. I, I'm not sure what to do here, you know. I think I must, I've tried very hard to separate myself from, you know, these kinds of, from all this stuff, all this Christian ease stuff, and all these people online with their Nephilim books and all their other things, you know, this whole kind of fake 
ministry online where they they come out and they talk about satanic ritual abuse and different things they don't know a damn thing about. And they're selling their books and they're begging you for money and they want you to come to their seminars. And I've tried to get away. I have gotten away from all those. I've gotten away from all the, like, you know, Stan Deos and all these other kind of people, you know. Well, he was just another guy that, you know, totally insulted me. He said, I'm not going to have coffee with you. You know, he wouldn't. It was the same thing as running up against the rock star with him. Oh, yeah, he's the same guy as the rock star. He could spout off what it was, anything he believes, but, I mean, my experience was, my personal experience was not, uh, was not exactly copacetic. No, I had him on the show. I was just trying to, you know, do the talk show thing, and I, I found out that he was disapproving of anyone that's, uh, I guess, anyone that's not a Satanist. While you're in Christ. They're all like that. They're all, all, they're, all, they're all like that. But, I mean, you know, how do they get like that? How can they, they get meaner, I think, and more hateful when they're, without Jesus, they would be maybe cool, more cool, you know what I mean? A little more loving, a little more compassionate. But once they get Jesus going, then they just throw rocks at everybody. Well, I'm throwing rocks at, I'm not, I'm not throwing rocks, I'm exposing, you know, the truth about these people. I mean, you know, you don't think that, (laughs) what they don't like about me is that I won't just die and go away. And that's the same thing with the, with the people trying to shame me for posting stuff. I mean, they can just go fuck themselves as far as I'm concerned. I don't have to not cuss. You know what? I've decided I'm going to cuss because guess what? When it's used correctly, it's very linguistically beautiful. Hell with these PC Christians who with the fake love. I hate the fake love. I'd rather have them hate than do the, where's your compassion? I hate that. No, it's tough, man. It's tough, you know. When you're a lamb, you're not really welcome in any church and you're not really welcome anywhere, but without you, this world couldn't go on. Isn't that the most, isn't that the damnedest thing? Isn't that the craziest thing? But you've all heard the story about, you know, killing the goose that laid the golden egg, right? We kill that which gives us life. If not for God's intervention, none of us would be here. He must, I just don't believe that God's going to condemn billions, but see, Satan does, and so there's this plan to get every last man, woman, child in, so God will then condemn and destroy it. God says we have to come out and be separate so we, we are not partaking of her, the queen of Babylon's plagues. If it were up to me, I would push a button and let everybody go home. You know what I mean? Hug, kumbaya, have a pizza, you know, have a beer, whatever. You know what I mean? And we all go home you know, to our nice snug beds and everyone has what they need and, you know, it's over. I just don't have that power. But I certainly wouldn't hold it. I'd let Adolf Hitler go home. Yeah, he was playing a role too. You know what I mean? And I'd resurrect all the Jews. Everyone that got killed, resurrect them all. Let them all go home. But this war with God is real, and this planet is, or plane, whatever you call it, whatever it really is. The Bible is what's the true thing. The Bible says it best. The rulers of the world are at war with God. The powers that be are at war with God. And at the same time, it says, the powers that be, the governments of the world, are of God. Well, of course, everything is of God. Well, the way I look at it is, is unless they renounce that they're of God, if they, if they are clearly not of God, then, then um, you know, God allows that to exist as well. 
then I would say they're dysfunctional. They would be able to function as a government. Clearly, we have now we have a non-government. We have more of a some sort of dictatorship. But you know, but at the top of the ladder, the the, the food chain is the uh, corporatocracy. You know, robots, AI. <laughs> you know, it's just uh, we need God's intervention. That's what I want to get onto now. We need God's intervention in all this. Okay. We definitely need God's intervention and help. But what good is it is if, if, if we're all just, you know, hating on everyone? You know, we've got to uh, realize that we're all in this boat together. And I can't convince anyone of anything. You know, hey, people, you, you musicians who listen in here, and you're not sure what you believe, look, I, I, there's nothing I can do for you. God reeled me in when I was, you know, at the end of my rope, but it was a real experience, so real that I, I never went, I never turned away. But unless he does something in your life, it's, you're just going to have to keep wondering about it. I used to listen to these, when I was driving across the country, I'd be listening to the late night preachers and something, you know, they sounded okay, but there's just something off always on all those preachers I'd listen to coming through Texas and down the Route 66 and all that. There was just something off. Now, to watch Gene Scott on the, on the television, you know, I was always wondering about him, but there was something off. I'd be going to history of religion classes at uh, college and, uh, you know, whenever we got in the subject of the New Testament and all this, there's just something off. You know, it's one thing studying Hinduism and Buddhism and Tibetan Buddhism and, you know, Zen Buddhism, Mahayana Buddhism. You know, there was just something about that. It was more academic and it was, you know, kind of, you know, I don't know. Now, to me, it all looks like the world is one thing, not separate cultures, but just one. And then I wonder, God, why did you make this place like this? with humanity all at war with each other. And then the bigger problem that we all have is, despite the people that were up there in the militia, no, no, the, it's not the fact that they're militia up there because they should be mad at the Black Panthers. No, it's the fact that they're Christians is why they want them dead. That's why Montel, because Montel is a Satanist, obviously. That's why he wants them dead. He wouldn't, he wouldn't want those people dead there if, if, if they weren't, if it wasn't a spiritual issue. But then again, I see Christians who want me dead. Oh, he can say it's whatever. I, who cares what he says he is? Everyone can say everything, but I think everybody, everybody seems to be uh, not fully comprehending that we all fall short of the glory of God and we're all sinners. And, you know, I, I can't, I can say satanic this or that, but, you know, um, I know there are people totally sold out into it, like a religion, and they're very dedicated. But I can't really condemn them totally. I just have to um, contend for the faith myself because I know some people in the New Age movement who sin less than Christians, who are like monks. Yep, I know Christians who sin a lot. I know David got people killed. Yeah, well, maybe not on purpose, but being reckless, being careless, making mistakes. Moses made mistakes. That's what I love about God's word, that you know, you don't have perfect people doing perfect things all day long. You do have that in uh, the stories from the East. You have perfect people and gods and demigods and all kinds of everything in between, all being perfect. <laughs> it's really like Disneyland when you talk about the Eastern religions. It is Disneyland. It's just, it's, it's this whole um, other world, but they still want something from you. They want the thing that God, and may I just say this, ladies and gentlemen, 
the thing that they all want from you is the thing God wants from you. If you want to go with God, you've got to give that to him. And if you give it to the world, then it's got, you don't have it to give to him. So there you have no consummation there. It's, it's, like, it's almost like sex consummation, you know? Without being in possession of your soul, you can't go with the Lord because you don't really technically exist. It's just a body. Well, now, I've, I've looked at all the tragedies. You, you know, the, this whole thing about these people being having such a good life because they sold out to the devil. How do you explain the, 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 the plight of a Ginger Baker or Steve Marriott? And, and, and I don't know about the others. They seem to be doing okay financially, but you know who, who wound up not getting any money from their endeavors. I mean, how do you explain that? If they're such big time Satanists, you know, if that's really what's going on. The people of the world who are worlders, I think they're made that way. And their concept of love is a quid pro quo love. Like, I'm going to love you, but you love me back or else, you know, and I'm going to give this to you, but you give that to me. And with God, it doesn't work that way. It's like freely give, freely receive. He, he, you give it, to, I give it to you. You pay it forward to somebody else. You know what I mean? You don't owe me anything. I give to you with an open hand. You don't even have to say thank you. You know, it, it can't be that way. But the world doesn't work that way. The world works on um, a haggling marketplace of quid pro quo. The world in general is disastrous. The world is sad and screaming. The world is crying for help. The world is hurting awfully bad. I don't think anyone going into 2016 really believes that they have it all together. I don't think the hedge fund managers do. I don't think um, the Google people do. I mean, to think about people at the top of the food chain. I don't think Apple CEO Tim Cook does. I don't think anybody does. Oh, I mentioned Tim Cook, so therefore label me a Satanist, please, because he's gay. Okay, wow. Go ahead and hurt me. Ha. Oh, it feels good. Go ahead, take your best shot. But I'm just about, no, you can't listen to my podcast. That's satanic. I cussed, I, I used the F-bomb. I used bullshit, like in describing you, and uh, whatever, you know. Uh, that can't be a Christian. I've also described the church as being, you know, um, a, a totally hate-filled institution, and, and it, it is. I mean, let's go beyond the Satanism. What about hate-filled? If you have the Holy Spirit, can you really be hate-filled? One thing, if you have the Holy Spirit, you can do music. <laughs> the Spirit of God is what you need. If you don't have that, then it's just like the other people. they got to fill up, right, on other people. They're like vampires. Then they got something to spend on the music. If you really have the Holy Spirit, if you're really hooked up with the Lord, then you have an unlimited inspiration, you know. So that's one thing where God is better, you know what I mean? You, you don't have to keep redoing it over and over. Well, the one thing people want is they want to be loved. They want to be respected. They want to have, uh, you know, a life that they can carve out. But I don't think anyone here in the United States or anywhere else for that matter on earth feels that they're going to be able to carve out a life. And certainly not in Europe. Certainly not in the Middle East. Certainly not in the United States. Certainly not in uh, Brazil. I mean, you look at Brazil right now. Brazil is, is the worst um, recession since 1901. Since 1901. They've never had it this bad. And, you know, I believe that the totalitarian left believes that global poverty is really the key toward getting control of everybody's nuts. So they're going to play that poverty card. You know, so that fits in with Obama, you know, and he can blame it on the Republicans or whatever because the people that listen to him are so stupid that, they, that they're like, it's like talking to... Um, you know, 
a, uh, it's like talking to a tape recorder. It's already pre-taped. That's what it's like talking to them. That's, they have a bumper sticker mentality. And they're just, they speak in terms of bumper stickers. Go Hillary. Oh, yeah, yay for gun control. Kill all the, uh, you know, the people that are gathering, they're questioning the government, kill them all. You know, that these are terrible people because they hate freedom and they, they're, they're building little 200 square foot houses and saying, look, we ought to all live in these, you know, which is the pre-brainwashing uh, of Agenda 21. Uh, they're doing it. And they're, by the way, there's no air conditioning and fridges in those 200 square foot, you know, rack them and stack them places. All that they're pushing forward, you know, to the ultimate hell on earth. And nobody is doing anything about it. Certainly the Christians aren't. They're just sitting there screaming at people they don't approve of. At least online. Doing their nice videos about Illuminati programming and all the rest of it. And I'm not going to really put that down. I mean, I've watched those and it's okay, but it's... It just seems there's always something missing. They don't exactly mirror reality, a lot of them. You know, it's almost like it's, it's a narrower point of view. Like I look at this black child guy, you know, and he's like pointing out all the uh, Illuminati stuff with, you know, Jay-Z and the hip hop and the this and that, you know, the whole kind of black culture and, 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 and entertainment. And, um, and, you know, about I don't know if it was him or some other guy. I think there's another guy named... I can't remember his name. I'm sorry. But there just seemed to be something missing in those videos. And he claims to be a Christian and everything. I, I just don't know. There just seems to be something missing in, in those. Something is just too pat. It doesn't add up. And the same thing with this Yash Kara guy. This is another guy. And uh, he's talking about similar things, and there's something missing there. And, you know, he also ran, a, you know, in other videos. I've, I look at, you know, the Russian vids and some others. I, I, see, I see people out there now and again. I'm not really so consistent. I don't have time for that. I, I just really don't. But um, I can say this, that... Uh, to get the big picture of it all. To wonder how many are in, how many are out, how many are hot, how many are not. The people who would say something like that are themselves now miserable, who, who, who nodded and winked. All the nodders and winkers are miserable now. The laughter and joy has gone out of the world in 2016. It's gone. The people that were the winners, winning, are not smiling anymore. The people that felt they were going to win politically, they realize, for example, like the United States, it's hopelessly divided. If there's a civil war, it won't be between, it's not between races. It's just between God and Satan, left and right, or whatever, but I mean the true left and right. It would just be those two, you know, it's just the same cats and dogs. It seems where it's been promoted, the cats versus the dogs, there's no peace. So people in the United States are demoralized, which is part of the social programming. They want you to be as miserable as you can possibly be, take everything you have from you, including your children, Shame you for ever having been born and then, and then killing you while you're in your 200 square foot cage in misery land. But make no mistake, your fellow Americans are miserable. You Europeans and you Middle Easterners, you know, everybody is miserable. Whether if, if you're Islamic, you're miserable. If you're a Jew, you're miserable. If you're a Christian, you're miserable. I suppose if you're in Hollywood, you're having fun, but now you're looking around out there. 
you know, maybe you've had a banner a year and you're having your parties at the beach and in LA and whatever else and you finally bought that house in Malibu and everything's cool now but you realize the world is so bad that you really cannot enjoy your own success if that's you there's hope for you yet if that's you there's hope I'm not going to give up hope on everyone I know from time to time when I was younger I was very strident and Maybe a lot like people who attack me at this point. But I have a hard time believing God would create all these people on the earth. Billions just to trash us all. I realize he is no respecter of persons. I have a hard time believing that there is not a God when I consider the nuclear threat and the fact that we're still talking. So I see evidence of God's intervention all the time. But as usual, it's always too little too late for most people to be satisfied. They want a big miracle that will, a big portal to open up and we can all walk into bliss. I Believe me, folks, if there's a button I could push and let everyone go free who ever lived it, because once you take your mask off and we're backstage, there's no sinners, there's no anti-God, there's, no, there's nothing. It's just it's a different dimension. Those issues don't exist there. Those conflicts do not exist there. Only here. Where it seems like we're a little more than cannon fodder. You know, being used for somebody else's power or pleasure. And it should not be like that. And there are many preyed upon, like, for example, the whole country, by a few. So whatever the country thinks they are, I mean, I know the rock and rollers think they're, they're, they're hanging out with Satan big time, but they're actually like lambs to the slaughter because the bigger predators are preying upon them. We're all being preyed upon here. I don't care what your religion is or what you believe. And in that, we have a common bond. And in that, we should come together to survive. Don't you agree? I mean, I have to talk truth about the Lord because the Lord is truth, you know. But I mean, I've got to do it in such a way that doesn't, you know, take a guy like me and send you to the, you know, out looking for the exit. You know, I'm, I'm trying to explain that this is a mysterious thing. I wish the Lord would turn off the suffering button for so many. You know, I really do. Uh, I don't like to see the suffering and the screaming. When I look on Twitter, I, I, I'm horrified. I have to stay off of there for my own sanity because people are so mean to each other. It's, 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 you know, they're basically calling any which way they can, they want blood. The left is just itching for blood. They want another Waco. They want, a, they want, the left's army is the government and the right is, you know, the militia or whatever. You know, it's just, it's, uh, but what they, people don't realize is that there's a lot of people in the government that are, siding with the Constitution and with, you know, so it's a, it's a split everywhere. The wheat and the tares grow everywhere. There is not a solid coalition of government against the people. There is a division where there are people not obeying the, you know, the government's dysfunctional in that there is not a top-down command and control anymore. People are ignoring Obama's orders, for example. The FBI is ignoring Obama. The military is ignoring Obama. The, the, the law, the, the, People are laughing at his executive orders because whatever he can do, right? He can put into write down whatever he wants so he can go take a victory lap again. But they will be canceled as soon as there's another president. Period. You know he's done nothing but cause misery, division, hatred, um, and there's a sense that I have in the country of self-loathing, shame. 
guilt, confusion, depression, uh, con- you know, confusion with a capital C, that people are lost and confused. And they don't know which end is up anymore. They thought they knew the way to go. They don't even know what to do. They don't know what to do now. But it's true. They don't know what to do. They don't know where to go. They don't know what to think. And they're not listening to the government or the television. And they're waking up. So I'm here to say, hey, look, we have a lot more in common, you know, to survive this thing. You may be in a foxhole with people that believe a different, whatever, religious thing than you. I mean, that's... But the good question is like, why didn't the pagans get me? I was there begging them to take me, begging them, you know, wanting to be on the inside track, you know, wanting my, you know, to sell my soul to the devil so I, I could have music, you know. I, I was not resisting that. They, they may say I was rebellious, but I know it's more like traumatized ignorance, um, I was I was not quite sure of reality. I, I I just didn't understand. You know, it was the main thing. But uh, no, I if, if, now of course I look back. I'm just grateful. But I I see there was a force of a hand on me, a hand on other people who forced my path through. I am a miracle. I was voted most likely not to make it to, you know, 25 years old or whatever. Or even 20, if you like. Or even 18. And uh, the Lord just kept walking me through, you know. But it's, it's a miracle completely. How do you explain that? The odds are there are no odds. It should have, you know, why are there so many... Or if you like, why are there rabbits out there with so many ravenous coyotes? They're hungry. There shouldn't be any rabbits out there, but there's a lot of rabbits out there. Why? Why are there wheat and tares, and the wheat stay wheat and the tares stay tares? Why can't the tares make the wheat become tares? Or vice versa? just isn't going to happen. Why are there so many things like that written in stone? Why is it like, okay, so we're just not going to talk anymore. Goodbye, Zef. Goodbye. We're on both uh, different sides of this thing. So we ought never to talk again. Goodbye, friend. So sorry this thing was bigger than us. Goodbye. Hope we meet up again under better circumstances. Now, if you can get to that point, then you have compassion in your heart. Unfortunately, most Christians, it's like the Christian thing is there to attract people that are I guess somewhat shallow or, you know, very um, short-sighted, but then the inner, as an outer guard to make sure people don't just wander into Jesus. But Jesus is not in Christianity. You know, he's separate from, from religion. Jesus and church really don't mix because, I mean, though they use him and they use the scriptures, they don't mix because the one, the church is conformed to the world. And the Bible says you have to be unspotted by the world and you have, uh, the, he who is a friend of the world is an enemy of God. So the church violated that. And so the, what goes on inside is, can't be completely legitimate, although I know good things can happen. Fervent prayer can be done, healings can be done. But that's just something that's going to have to be dealt with. Um, I don't condemn it. I just, I observe it. I was hurt by it very much. I, when I really needed a friend, boy, they they sure stabbed me in the back. They weren't, they weren't there for me as a friend. No. 
I witnessed, I testify to that, Lord. My life is a witness of that, and you know very well. The Lord just took me through all that to show me. He wanted me to learn how the world worked and how, what the churches were all about, you know. And, and he wanted me to see each one to show me that they're all the same. And then he wanted me to see that all the Buddhist temples were the same and synagogues are all the same. It's, it's all the same thing, no matter what, where you go, it's all the same. So I see the world very, in a very clear, almost like a very simple way, that it's all the same thing. There's light and dark, winners and losers. People have light, and they seek to snuff the light out. People who are in the darkness kind of get a free ride, right? <clears throat> I see that. But if it's all darkness, then the world ends. If it's all light, I guess it would be heaven. Wouldn't be this dimension. But to me, it's like mainly darkness with light that's, that's bothering the darkness. The light disturbs the darkness, but the darkness can't quite snuff it out. This interplay between opposites, light and dark, seems to be the way the world works, and people seem to be divided among the same thing, light and dark. I can't judge it. Are there people that are on the dark side that come to the light? Absolutely there are. Are there people on the light side that go there? Absolutely. But could a person come to the light side and be darkness? Yes. They can use the Christian platform to put people to death, for example. Now the Christian will be put to death eventually. Brother Thomas thinks that was it him or somebody else? No, I, it was Kunita, I'm sorry, who said that the people in the church would be the tribulation saints. Ultimately, they'll be persecuted. So I suppose there's that, but there's also an ecumenical movement that is an interfaith movement that is to blend in Islam, Christianity, and Judaism, and others into one, a one world, um, and they're working on this. I think Rick Warren... It's heading up the, the Christian end of this to try to, or someone like him, you know, <laughs> take your pick out of central casting. Well, you, you know, yeah, I mean, I say cantankerous. I can't, no, I'm not here to be all lovey-dovey. That's not it. You know, I'm just, I'm just, I have to show the love of God, though. And I think I, you know, I think I do that. At the same time, I, I'm here not to be a fool, and I think I do that. Well, people, you know, they've tried to take me on, and um, they find that, you know, it's 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 very, it's it's they're grasping at straws. They're not quite, you know, a lot of times they don't even get into a fight because you're not taking me on; you're taking him on. If you want to take God on, that's up to you. I wouldn't do it if I were you. But if you want to get your ass kicked, go ahead. Take God on. Go ahead and attack me then, if you like. Well, I'm just waiting to be called not a Christian. <laughs> I'm waiting to be called a Satanist. And the people that call me that have never proven to be of the Lord. But they're there on YouTube and they're, you know, they'll make their videos of these evil, awful people. And, um, you know, I can't stand it. I, I you know, I, I, I haven't quoted any scriptures today. There's a bunch that come to mind. I, you know, I suppose that, you know, the, the thing about the Bible is it's, it's really true for a lot of us. Well, I don't know what to make of um, the uh, the people of the world. I don't know what to make of the uh, the whole talk show circuit people. Well, I mentioned you know Stan Dale, but he's nothing. He's just another talk show guy. He's you know. Uh, I, I'm just saying, you know, that was a personal incident where obviously I, I saw another side. 
People say, well, I've seen that with you too. Well, fine, we all suck. But there's a certain thing where there's a line, you know, I mean, there's a certain other kind of thing. It's the same as the pagan thing. When I was, you know, going to the audition, I'd win the audition. And then, you know, there's the Satan thing, right? Why am I not a Satanist? And there are many who have been, you know, corrupted in that way, who then take on Jesus as their kind of identity. But the other thing isn't fixed yet. That's a lot of people. That's, that's a ton, ton, ton of people. They say, we're Christians. We, we're a Christian church, but we know the way the world really works. We're not stupid, you know, but we're with Jesus. And I'm like, okay, so you got that sort of social conformity to the world system, but then you got Jesus going too. Well, they're not mutually exclusive, Zeph. You know, you're just you're asking people to starve to death. I'm I'm not asking anyone to do anything. I'm just wondering what what you're talking about. I'm trying to figure out what's going on myself. Are you saying then you have to be a Satanist in order to put food on the table? And then the minute you go down that road, you blow your credibility and you also blow your argument on the water. No, I mean, I could mention Steve Quayle and I could mention, you know, coast to coast radio. I could mention, I'm not want to be enemies with any of these people. Let me just say that. I don't dislike them, any of them. I just saw that, you know, I, I bumped up against a wall. Why, I don't know. Maybe that wall will come down eventually, you know, and, and when it does, I'll, I'll be there with open arms. I'm, you know, it is what it is. I can't, I didn't do it. It's not my fault. Well, I don't want you to get hung up on one person's name or another or another. There's a whole bunch of them in that category. You know, and, and you know, you can listen or not. I have found that in listening to them um, in that category, that most of their sort of what they call prophetic information turns out to be incorrect. Look, here's the thing. I don't want to be in their group. I don't want to be in the official Christian club. I don't want to be in the Christian club that goes on coast to coast and talks about end time prophecy. I don't want to be anywhere near any of that. You know, I have my own opinion as to why I would rather just be among average people just trying to figure out what the, you know, what in the hell this is. So, you know, no, I don't want to, I'm not having a war with anybody. No, I don't want to have that. No, it's just old, this is old business, 15 years old. It's not worth it. I don't care. Besides that, I could care less. I'm just saying they put themselves out there as Christians, which I don't, I don't feel I have any kind of connection with them. You know, I sort of wanted to, but it wasn't like the rock star thing. I wanted to really be a drummer in one of these bands, these big time bands, you know. And uh, so I, I saw, you know, but I, to be a third rate talk show host, to sell out for that, that would not be to get the approval of, you know, them. Would, would, uh, it would, it's not, it just seems absurd. But this is serious business. I mean, you know, it's, it's, uh, you got to use your own discernment. I, you know, I listen to people. Like, I listen to uh, talk shows and different things. And, you know, everyone has their own bias. Who am I to say, too, that, you know, there could be a person, uh, there could be two people saved in Christ. And one kills the other one for blasphemy. And you know, eventually comes to learn that, oh my God, that was a brother in Christ I, I just killed. But may not know it right then. Ah, uh, sure. Of course that could be. Of course that could be. I could kill you out of ignorance. 
or I could kill Jesus. And then later go, oh my God, what have I done? As I come to know more on the spiritual path. Yes, absolutely. I could condemn and hate and wrongfully name call, and maybe I have tonight. I could do all those things. Well, I've had them say, you know, from that side of thing, and they, these are all people about to, you know, probably, you know, now we're in the elderly category and gone away, but these are people that all just got so mad at me that they, they just, I will never have anything to do with Channel Z or Zeffing N. And then I'd say, why? You know why? <laughs> Tourette syndrome. Why? <laughs> Cat got your tongue. Why? And that thing, that why, and that thorn in the side of everybody is God. Just getting to the most uncomfortable, most naked, most embarrassing point of all. It's like, could Billy Graham be standing up there on a platform giving a speech talking about how great uh, Romania is to not persecute Christians with Richard Wormbrand being in prison several store floors below in the prison? Could that possibly be happening? That actually did happen. Was Billy Graham saved? I don't know. Is he still alive? I don't know. Gosh, I don't know. It's just, I don't really know the status of anybody. I just couldn't say whether you're saved or not, and I can't say whether I'm saved or not, and I, I mean, I could say I, I believe I am. Maybe I'm not, though. You know, I've stayed with the Lord, the whole time, but obviously other people have different opinion of that. So even applying it to myself, I can't look at myself and go, well, gosh, you've had such a good record of consistency and, and, uh, and selflessness, and you certainly deserve to be, you know, I certainly would fail at sainthood in the Catholic Church. Anyway, with that, I bid you shalom. We can't solve it today.